Hi, I'm Sukriti from the One in Asankhya project and we have Rahul Chatterjee with us today. He's the first final year PhD student we've had the honor to interview. He's published in tier one security conferences and has been featured in the New York Times and MIT Tech Review. Above it all, he's joining University of Wisconsin-Madison as an assistant professor for fall 2019. Rahul is pursuing a PhD under Dr. Thomas Reeston Part at Cornell University. His interests lie in security and privacy. He was an intern at Dropbox, Microsoft Research Technologies Redmond, and Adobe Systems India Private Limited. Among several other achievements, it is worth mentioning that he won the Distinguished Student Paper Award at the IEEE Synopsium for Security and Privacy 2016, a special CS fellowship from the Department of Computer Science at UWM, and a rank of 254 in IIT JE. So pursuing a PhD at Cornell University under the guidance of Dr. Thomas Wiestenpart is a truly remarkable achievement. Which area of computer science are you currently working on? I work on computer security, particularly with passwords, like uh, how to make passwords more secure and use usable. Okay. I also work on other things like uh, how to help domestic violence victims from not being used via technology or uh, also with biometrics, like how to make, say, for example, our Aadhaar system has so many billions of biometric records and there is no secure way to store those biometrics at the moment. And I'm looking into how can you create secure storage for biometric databases, like uh, the other system or the one, the US Customs and Border Protection, they also have a large, like almost half a billion user, uh, user biometrics. Okay. So that's another my project. So this is the area where I work on. Okay. Is your will, is your thesis also based on these areas only? Like the yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll move on to the next question. So dedicating four years to an extensive and renowned PhD program requires unwavering perseverance and grit. Based on your personal experiences, what advice would you give to individuals who have uh, recently stepped into a computer science PhD program? Well, um, well, if someone already stepped into the PhD program, then most likely they have some idea of what they are expecting. So it's it's okay to be not sure in the beginning what they want to do at the end of the PhD. Like I was not sure, okay. and maybe I'm not sure even either now. But <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, and uh, it's it's a fun to start and explore, enjoy the research. The first uh, advice would be just enjoy research and exploration. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, like sometimes it might feel frustrating that you're not being able to do anything or you're not like your peers are producing better results than what you are producing, but that's okay. The yeah. six, research is like that. It, it doesn't work, doesn't work. And then someday it will work and you will be happy. Okay. So. But uh, when you applied, did you see all this coming or like, you know, did you, did you know that you would have to face all of this? Or not much you... actually. No, I wasn't. I was. I have a completely different perception of PhD. I thought PhD is like you work on a single project for four years, or five years. Okay. That's not true. Okay. PhD, at least in computer science, uh, it's more of like you pick a bunch of project, different kind of project that you like to work on. Okay. This is something that we, at the end of the say third year, we decide. Okay, this is one part of the project that is say you have two or three papers and you make that the thesis. But you work on very different kinds of projects so that you'll not feel bored. Okay. And you can pick whichever you like. And I did not know about this until I came to PhD. Okay. okay. All right. So I'll move on to the next question. You've published in several top tier security conferences like IEEE, SNP, CCS, Crypto, etc. You have also won the Distinguished Student Paper Award for IEEE SNP 2016. What are your takeaways from drafting manuscripts for successful submissions for such uh, top tier conferences? Well, the, the thing is being thorough and rigorous. Like the only thing is by paper, you are convincing someone that you have a great idea. Okay. So make sure that you yourself is completely convinced that your idea is, is completely uh, thoroughly analyzed. And say, if you have a proof, then you proved it. If you have a uh, say data analysis, you analyzed it thoroughly. So as long as you do, do the thorough job of it, and then you write it, of course, you have to write it in a convincing way that someone can read and understand what you have done. Okay. It's a, it's like basically challenging for people who are coming from like English is not native language for us. 
Okay. It's initially challenging, but so as long as, but yeah. academic writing is much easier than the writing, uh, say the English we wrote in our, uh, in India, when I was used to write, they were like, they needs yeah. a, a poetic literary English. Academic yeah. writing is much more straightforward and you just have to make sure that you are grammatically correct okay. and people can understand by reading and that's it. Okay. So. Do you all actually work on projects and then when the conferences come up, you all, uh, you know, uh, draft papers for it? Or is it that with the intention of the conference coming up, you all start, you know, sorting out your work and then, uh, and then, you know, streamlining your projects? Like, this is just... Out yeah, of both interest. actually. Both? This happens okay. both. So, you normally you start a project, you work on it, and then you probably target a certain conference. Okay. Fortunately, now in computer security, you have basically deadline every month. So okay. one of the top tier conference has a deadline every month. Okay. There are like three or four top tier conference and they basically have rolling deadline across okay. the year. And the way they are spread out that you have, you can submit to any one of the conference in every month. Okay. And the benefit of that is like, you don't need to rush for a conference deadline. Yeah. You can basically work at, you know, at your own pace and then submit. It okay. also has a belt for like a, like a, <laughs> negative point because then you don't feel of the rush the rush is important yeah. sometimes to get the work done yeah <laughs> so you feel like okay this one is gone i have the next one in next month next, so month, yeah. next month and then next month so that's a problem but otherwise uh, if you can use it in a positive way like complete yeah. the project to the to a logical conclusion okay. of course you can't do everything but do a set up to an extent that you are convinced that this is a nice uh, self containing project that is publishable Okay. And then you go to submit to one of the conferences that the closest deadline. Okay, all right. Having interned with uh, Dropbox, Microsoft Research Technologies, and Adobe Systems India Private Limited, what were the kind of projects that you got a chance to explore? It's interesting. So, so like as you started with this uh, question of what is the advice for the first year PhD students, um, I will start from there. It's Many PhD students come directly after college, uh, which is fine. But then you also need to explore industry because there are lots of important opportunities in industry. There are lots of nice, uh, interesting problems there. So I would definitely recommend going for an internship as much as possible in the first couple of years of your PhD. I mean, as much means you can do two, two internships in two PhD, uh, two years. Okay. And um, so the, I, I get to know lots of people in my industry. I, I was able to see how industry actually works because often in academia industry, there is a disconnect. So um, like in Adobe, I was in my undergrad, I went and I worked on something like, uh, how do you create meaningful tags for images automatically by say, you, if someone is writing a tag for an image and then you try to recommend that okay you change this word and then the tag will look more classy or look more nice okay so that's kind of work uh, in microsoft i was looking at how actually developers make mistake while coding okay. security related uh, projects and dropbox i looked at how <coughs> attack works against uh, account like uh, attackers try to compromise user accounts and how those attacks work and how can you detect it and stop it okay so, All right. yeah, those are those are really great experience of doing PhD. You can you get to see so how industry works, how actually real world works, and uh, how you should pick problems. I have done like based on my ex internship experience, I changed the way. So my Adobe ex experience actually be become my um, BTEC thesis. My, okay. The Do Dropbox project was actually become the paper that got the best paper award. Okay. So, wow. so industry uh, industry experience are good. Okay, okay. It's so inspiring to hear this. <laughs> what is an ideal day in the life of a Cornell computer science PhD student like? And how do you keep yourself from burning out? Well, um, so ideal days are rare. <laughs> so there is the average day and then you have an ideal day. So average days are basically you go there, you try to do something, it works or it doesn't work, or you basically spend time talking to other people. Ideal day would be like you go there, you do a meeting, and then something nice idea came up. You, you either your code runs, or okay. you basically you are able to submit a paper. So these are kind of ideal days, I would say. But uh, overall, I think Cornell Tech has a very, very uh, helpful environment for PhD students. It's very, um, it's not. It will 
you will not feel super competitive environment but also very encouraging to collaborative and encourage you to do more than what you normally will do okay. so uh, in that way that, so i don't feel super burned out in cornell tech where i am right now located so cornell is in ithaca and cornell tech is in new york city so yeah. new york city campus is much smaller but um it's an open office plan so it's like everyone sits in big large room so it's, it's okay. much easier it's more of a startup company kind of culture oh okay and, uh, so i i normally don't get burnt out but if i do say at the end of a semester or if after a deadline then basically you pack your bag and go for a hiking okay <laughs> <somewhere>. <laughs> um your personal website speaks multitudes about the impactful projects that you have worked on in fact we've tried tip top out of the lot which project has had a profound impact on you well um tip top is an exciting project because you basically build something and see people using it like i hope you <laughs> it worked on your laptop yeah i it did <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good experience of building so normally in computer science when you do research you build something or co- write code for yourself because you do measurement and then throw it away or not throw it away but don't care <laughs> about it um compared to in industry like you basically build something that someone else will use so tip top was something like that and i was really enjoyed it building it the another project that i am very uh, excited to talk about is this project on domestic violence victims because um so you can the project is that you can use any like normal innocuous apps like find my phone or uh, oh. say google maps to spy on someone uh someone in the sense when it's intimate partner it's much easier to pull off okay because you have physical access to the device you know passwords probably you can log into the device and you can reconfigure the device to basically share the location share sms share call logs with uh, the intimate partners okay and so during the project i was actually going to the field and like talking to the victims and uh, trying to understand their problems and it's like way different than what we inside computer science department the way we see computer science Okay. Like we see everyone knows computer we we build something and everyone will use it right away and uh so there is this like gap like huge gap between what we see the world is and the actually the world okay. is okay and that project actually opened my eyes okay okay so your projects have a fair amount of field work as well mm-hmm. okay all right Yeah is is it is it very important to have like such kind of field work It depends on what kind of project you are doing um the kind of project I do I kind of um I like to be have the human factor in my research like not do only research with like theory and proof and computers but it's uh, it's good to have like bring this human aspect and then the problems become much more interesting much more complex because humans are hard to model but it's it's fun you can see someone using it or someone okay. uh, someone being actually human being affected by your uh, by your research that's much okay. more satisfying so among other outstanding feats you won a special computer science fellowship by the cs department at uh, university of wisconsin madison and you had obtained an iit je rank of 254 so what drives you so so the madison scholarship is basically not that's not a super great fee they normally give like i think 10% of the batch anyway to just okay. attract more students but the iit je is definitely a great <laughs> iit je was exciting in the like uh, i i did not expect that rank yeah <laughs> so coming from purulia okay. um basically like do something that you learn you want to learn and you get excited about doing those projects Unfortunately whatever i did to get this rank is nothing is used in my life at the moment like none of the math or physics or chemistry which is a little sad about it but you know you you i was very happy to do, learn those things and uh, that's the reason i did it so you took up computer science because you knew beforehand that that's where no. you know no <laughs> okay. i didn't know about computer science before i went to iit so Okay. It was basically everyone is was taking with this rank. Everyone suggested that you have a high rank, you can get a computer science, so you should go for it. <laughs> I went for it. Wow! I mean, from that to where you are today, and you know, despite like taking it up without knowing the stream earlier, is is really really it's very motivating 
<laughs> I mean, it worked out for me. It's uh, I'm happy and I'm fortunate, but it's yeah. not for everyone, and it's unfortunate in our country. Still, uh, we need to. We are like, we don't get to choose after college. You have to choose without knowing. Like, I don't. I'm sure all my friends who took chemical engineering, probably 99% of them did not have any idea what is chemical engineering. Yeah. And they took it. They have. That's the best option they can get, uh, based on three years, years ranks. Yes. So I wish we can change that, and you can basically. Declare your major after one year. The way it happens here, okay. you one year you take random courses, and then after one year or one or two year you declare your major. Okay. But we are like resource constrained country, so it's yeah. hard to do that. Yeah. Among your PhD escapades, is there any such experience or event that is etched in your memory? This could be either an event, incident, conference, anything as such, or even an interaction with a professor. That. Um. Well, it, does it have to be positive or it could be a negative too? It could be negative. I can't think of immediately. One thing that came to my mind during this field study, one of the, I was talking to one of this person oh. from, uh, she was from Pakistan and she was very, she cannot speak English well. And uh, we were able to talk in Urdu and like, okay, Hindi. And I, I felt like, like learning about, so she divorced like 10 years back, but she's still being abused by her partner. Oh, and uh, so both the thing that I was able to help using my, like I never thought my Hindi will be able to be useful in this context. Yeah, so it did. And also learning about this like such a horrific uh, situation she is living yeah. in. Okay, so that was uh, that was troubling, and it it left a mark in my memory. Well, okay, there's there's lot to be done in this area, and what that we are seeing here, then the situation would be much worse if we go back to India. Uh, like Bangladesh or Pakistan, it will be much worse. Yeah. How many hours of sleep do you get during weekdays on an average? Uh, seven hours. How many conferences or technical events do you attend in a month? Um, in a month, will be so it's like about two to three per year. Okay, all right. And these are what international and uh, or like how um. Well, now most of the conferences are in in the in the US. In the US, because it's okay. much easier for the international students to be inside US and go out and come back because of visa problems. So, okay. most of our conferences are inside US. All right. Okay. How many revisions do you make on an average to your manuscripts prior to submission? Well, not before the first submission. First submission, it will be like a really bad draft. But okay. after that, once it gets accepted, there is a thing called camera ready. Okay. So. Once you accept it, you basically now the camera that it goes to publication. That one you probably revise probably twice, at least twice. Okay, all right. Okay, then I'll move on to the fourth one. How many times do you have meetings or discussion with your professor in a week? It's about uh, three times, three to four times, depends okay. on for each different projects you talk. Okay. So about three to four times I meet per week. All right. Okay. And then the last one, is there one such habit that you would like to change about yourself? I guess uh, like leaving the paper towards the deadline, like doing work earlier than my deadline. That's my dream uh, from since the beginning of my PhD that I will be able to submit a paper seven days before the deadline. Okay. It never happened, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful someday it will happen. All right. Okay, so we are done with the questions. Uh, thank you so much, you know, for agreeing to do this.